Welcome back to Pretty Algebra. I'm going to talk about 1.7 and we just talked about adding, subtracting, so what do you think this is going to be? Multiplying and dividing. We're also going to talk about a very important, that's why I got a star, idea for pre-algebra. This is classic pre-algebra skill, mean, median, mode, and range. Now, what makes this hard is they all start with the letter M and they don't sound like what they are. So when they make me queen of math for America, then one of the things we're going to do is change what these are called. We're going to call them what they are. The mean is the average. You hear it sometimes on the weather. They'll say the mean rainfall in Georgia at this time of year, and they mean the average. How you make an average is you add everything up and divide by how many you have. We'll do it in a second. The next one is the median. It's if you put the numbers in order from least to greatest, the one in the middle is the median. If there's two in the middle, you average them and that's the median, halfway between them. Now we hear this term too in driving. Like here in Dallas, Georgia, we have this road called 278 and in the middle part of it, is grass and you're not allowed to drive on the grass unless you're the cops. Policemen, if you want to drive in the median, then you have to be a policeman. But there's a little sign that says don't cut, there's wildflowers, when there's wildflowers, and there's another one that says um, uh, stay off the median, which means you're not allowed to drive through the grass, you have to wait to do a U-turn down where there's pavement. So median is the middle part, just like the middle grassy part of the road is the median. For the numbers, it's the middle. And then the next one is mode, and mode means most, the thing that's repeated the most. Not all sets of data have modes, but if they have one, it's whatever's the most. And then the last one is range, and range is repeated, is repeated, is, um, uh, reported, I guess is the word I'm thinking of, different ways. In common speech, if this is our data, you might say the range is from one to six. Uh, also, in math, in, in your book in particular, they want you to do the biggest minus the smallest and say that's the range. So here's some data. And so first, to get the mean, the average, we add them all up. And you would do that on your calculator, and I've already added it up, it's 32. And then you count how many you have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I do 32 divided by 9, and my mean is about, this means about equal to 3.5. Okay? Uh, I think I probably should have said 3.56, because I think it rounds up one. Right? So the next one is the median. What's in the middle? There's nine of them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four is the median. It's in the middle. Which one is the most? Five. There's three of them. And the range, biggest to smallest, would be six minus one. So this is also five. Or you could say the range is one to six. All right? Now, let's get to our new idea of multiplying. Now, I explained this to you last time because they were already making you learn it, even though they hadn't taught it yet. But it's if you multiply two positives, you get a positive. If you multiply a positive and a negative, you get a negative. If you multiply two negatives, weirdly, you get a positive. The only thing that makes it not weird is we do the same thing in English. If you say, I ain't got no keys, that means you have some keys, because you don't have no keys, you therefore must have some keys. I know if you're Southern, this is hard because we use double negatives all the time. All right, same is true for dividing. If you divide one positive number by another, you get a positive. A positive by a negative, you get a negative. And if you divide one negative by another, it weirdly makes a positive because two negatives make a positive. All right, so let's try some of these. 2 times 4, they're both positive, so it's positive 8. 2 times negative 4, 1 is negative, so it's negative 8. Two, negative 2 times negative 4, 2 negatives, weirdly, makes a positive. Okay? Negative 3 times negative 12, 2 negatives make a positive 36. 
Uh, 3 times 12 is 36. If you didn't know that, do it on your calculator. 7 times 9, we have 1 negative and 1 positive, so it's going to be negative. And 7 times 9 is 63. And if we were in class, I'd show you a little trick to remember that, but we don't have time. All right. Anything times 0 equals 0. So negative 24 times 0 is 0. All right? You probably have learned that before. And here is a problem we can do. And notice it's got plus and multiply. So we have to do order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We, so we do our parentheses multiplying first. 200 times negative 3. It has one negative and one positive. So it's negative 600 plus... 150 times 2, they're both positive. 150 times 2 is 300. I owed you 600. I paid back 300. I still, uh, well, I only owe you 300 now. All right? Let's try this one, some dividing. Negative 48 divided by negative 6. Two negatives will make a positive. And uh, 6 times 8 is 48 because that's one of the rhyming ones that's easy to remember, is 8. Okay, 56 divided by 8. By negative 8, we have one negative. So the answer is going to be negative, and it's negative 7. How you remember this is uh, the cheer. 56 equals 7 times 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. Who do we appreciate? You. Yay, you. All right, so that's the little, I always think of that as the cheer multiplication. Some of you are not good at multiplication tables yet. Don't worry. The more we use them and the more I teach you little cheers and stuff, you're going to get better. All right, 0 divided by 9. We have no cake, and we're going to divide it between 9 people. How much cake do we get? No cake. What about if I said to divide 9 cupcakes by 0? Can we make 9 cupcakes 0 pieces? No, we can't, because even if we ate them, the molecules would still be there. If you cannot divide by zero. The answer is no solution. So try it on your calculator, 9 divided by zero, and see what it says. It'll probably say error, because you're not allowed to. The last thing in your book is it's a problem about temperatures in Antarctica, and they are big, and they average them. I want you to take a look at that and they find the mean. Remember, mean means average. They add them all up and divide by how many there are. I want you to try it on your calculator, too. All right? That wasn't so bad, was it? Math is fun. See you next one.